In homes nowadays, you can find a TV in many different rooms. You can find them in bedrooms, in kitchens, and even in bathrooms. So that while you're cooking supper or getting ready for the day, you can have the news on or find out what the weather's going to be or so that you won't miss a single play of the big game. And even if you don't have a TV in every room, you probably have a phone that allows you to watch TV or videos. But these TVs are not really designed to bring sharp color or amazingly detailed pictures. The screens are just too small. When a person really wants to see the picture in full detail, you watch the movie or the game on the big TV in the living room. In the kitchen or in the bathroom or on your phone, you catch a glance. But in the living room, you gaze because the screen is so much bigger. One of the reasons why Christians do not see things as they ought to be seen is that they look at the wrong screen. We tend to gaze at the wrong screen because we are so preoccupied with our own agendas and activities. All we have time to do is peek at things at the big screen every now and then. But God wants us to have the big picture. He wants us to see what He sees from His perspective, and He wants us to trust His direction. And He invites us to participate in His bird's eye view and to trust and live within that scope. Whether we realize it or not, we view our lives and the events that take place around us through a certain lens, a perspective. And that perspective determines whether or not we deem something as good or bad, right or wrong. For instance, later on in the year, a president of the United States will be elected. And there will be some who are terribly excited and some who will be terribly disturbed no matter who is elected. And your excitement or despair or perhaps even coolness is determined by your perspective and what you think is best for the world, the republic, and your own family. This is called a world view. Every person has a world view, a perspective by which they view their lives and the events of the world. And when we have God's perspective, then we call this a biblical world view. Well, here's the terrible cycle that we have seen the people of God start and stay is that they live in peace with a godly worldview and then rebellion which then brings on oppression for the people of God in the book of Judges. They then cry out to God who in sweeping and mighty acts of grace comes and rescues the people from certain doom and destruction. But godly perspective comes before a rescue. Real spiritual growth in the life of churches comes through accepting and abiding by godly perspective. The making of a mighty warrior begins with a godly perspective. So do you want to become a mighty warrior for the Lord? Do you want to grow spiritually? Church, do you desire to make an even greater impact in your world? It will happen through a change in your worldview, a honing of perspective, a deepening of our perspective as we dig deep into God's Word and prayer day by day. As you pray today, please remember Boris Lebedee and his family, our missionaries in Georgia. And also remember the Tagalog Life Word broadcast in the Philippines. Mm -hmm.